Dear friends, welcome to day seven, the conclusion of our retreat for married couples. Let us begin as always, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends, today I invite you to pray for the grace to love each other more fully, more deeply, more faithfully. In his first letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul describes the many faces of love, authentic love, gospel love. Let me share with you then what St. Paul is saying in chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Love is patient, love is kind, is not jealous, love is not pompous, is not inflated, is not rude, does not seek its own interests, is not quick-tempered, does not brood over injury, does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Love never fails. Dear friend, St. Paul describes love in many ways. Love is an interesting word. We use it in so many contexts. It has different meanings. In terms of marriage, love is even more than a feeling or an emotion, though the love of marriage encompasses both feelings and emotions. But love is a decision. It's an act of the will to be for the other for the other's good, for the other's welfare, to give of oneself for the other. Now this love is rooted only in Jesus Christ. The same Lord who hung on the cross out of love for us is the Lord we encounter in Holy Communion, in the Eucharist. That's why it's so important for all of us, especially for married people, to take part in the Holy Eucharist at least every Sunday or Saturday evening to grow in love. As you heard that reading, you may have thought to yourself, well, that's a reading I've heard lots of times at weddings. Heard that one before, so what's new? Well... (laughs) I invite you to reflect carefully on the virtues that St. Paul is mentioning. In the end, those virtues reflect the kind of love that truly is self-giving. Love that has husband and wife say to each other, I give myself for you, for your welfare for that of our family. I want to share with you a beautiful example of how this kind of love was so evident to me. Some years ago, I became acquainted, more than acquainted, became very close to a family, and still am. The couple had been married a number of years and had seven children together. And this was some time ago. Unfortunately, the wife at that time became ill with a brain tumor. In those days, there was not the technology and the advances in medicine that we now have. So unfortunately, there was not much that could be done. And in the end, after declining at home, she went to the nursing home and there declined even further. But her husband, every day, after working, and on weekends too, every evening, he went, fed her supper, talked with her, brushed her teeth. 
helped her prepare for sleep, kissed her, and went home. There wasn't much affective response from her to him. In fact, toward the end, she didn't know him. But he went every day. What a beautiful example of self-giving, self-emptying love. He lived those words of the marriage vows. I take you for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, for sickness and in health, until death do us part. Dear friends, I invite you as a couple to reflect again on the virtues that St. Paul is mentioning in his letter, there are many there. Consider them carefully. First of all, why do not each of you tell each other the virtue you see so beautifully being lived by the other, and how that virtue encourages you? But also, Share with each other how a virtue in your own life can be encouraging to the other and begin to practice whatever that virtue may be with the help of the Holy Spirit. Practice it not only for a day, not only for a week, but for whatever time it takes to have it firmly become part of your daily habit of life. Dear friends, I want to thank you for taking part in these days of reflection. I trust that through God's grace, you have profited from your reflections on his holy word and from any particular thoughts I've shared with you. You know, of course, I'm not married, but I so desire, eagerly desire, that every married couple would experience real fulfillment in their lives. And that could happen if you, as a married couple, stay close to Jesus. Archbishop Sheen was fond of saying, it takes three to get married, husband, wife, and the Lord himself. You stay close to the Lord let him deepen your love. It seems to me that at the end of one married life, if the couple can say to each other, it's been successful because we've traveled well together. Oh, not perfectly. We've made mistakes. We've had to ask for forgiveness. We failed each other sometimes. But in the end, when all is said and done, what a grace it is to have traveled together. That's my prayer for you, not only today, but in the days ahead. Cling to the Lord, cling to each other. May the Lord bless you and deepen your love. And yes, once again today, pray beautifully when our Father, Hail Mary, and glory be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.